Hey there, Tales of the Flipside family. Here we are with our big Apple Comic Con video. Part two. Stay tuned to the end because we have some really cool interviews with Brian O'Halloran, David Madison, Ming Chen, and Brimstone. So hang out all the way to the end, catch out what they say about Haven for Heroes. The killer balcony area. And uh, there's cosplayers, oh, and more cosplayers. There is Domino, very cool cosplay. So the signs, for the highly touted balcony, our men's room and women's restroom. That's how they know that the high class comics are upstairs. Oh, another film crew. Obviously not as good as mine. This is uh, Mike uh, Cavanera. We'll, we'll make a, a rip around. Some killer original art. Uh, I don't have enough to bring any. Uh, I do have some original art. You've seen them in the shop, but I don't have stuff like that. Amazing. This is the main floor that you see me shouting down at. We've got some great stuff, some amazing books. So they have a Fantastic Four number one on the wall. It's a 3-0. Really nice, some really nice books. Early's Avengers. Oh look everyone, there's an amazing Spider-Man 300. It's a 9-2, very nice book. And some more Spider-Mans, there's 362, 361, and 363. I have 363s in my dollar bin. Heroes aren't hard to find. These guys have a front and back side. A lot of amazing books, rated stuff, some golden age. This is a pretty cool show. I make fun because I'm jealous. It's like the, fir the fourth or fifth Amazing Spider-Man 129 I've seen. <clears throat> Up the top there next to a very early Superman. Very cool. She-Hulk number one. Centurion complete. Captain Marvel funny books. It's fantastic. Here's some more original art. Take a look at that haunt of fear. All my buddies out there, Tales from the Flip Side, that love these surly horror. This is a cover. Man, it's sick. Some weird fantasy, weird science. I had a, almost the entire run of that, and uh, man, it sold out pretty fast. I wish I had kept it. <laughs> Early Vault of Horrors. There's House of Secrets. It's a 5-5. First appearance of Swamp Thing. Everybody knows that's my book. Voodoo up top. Haunted Fears, just amazing stuff. I love, love these guys' setup. Just with the lights, the graded books on the metal shelving. This is done right. This is done right. That must be nuts to move, but it's done right. Yeah, and people bring cool games. It's a new setup. It's called Terragon. Yeah, another great lot of Golden Age books. It's a Marvel Comics, and all winners, Human Torch. That Frankenstein Comics, awesome. Good collection of modern books. Another incredible Golden Age, Silver Age rock rack. That's awesome. <laughs> A kid playing on the floor, that's what we love to see. These are one of the this is one of the first signs that actually has the name. Uh, see, get a good shot of that. Let's give this guy some some pump. This is Gary Dolgoff comics. You know, like everybody else. Good clear signs with what he's buying with his toll field free number on it. If you're selling your books, give the guy a call. Oh, creepy and eeries and vampirellas. Awesome. Oh man. 
there you go. There's another great group of Golden Age. It's a great voodoo book. Another great voodoo. Jungle Comics Bondage. Nice. Nice. Now we're going to head over and see if uh, Brian can give us a minute. Now we're heading into, uh, no, this is not, we're going to head into Artist Alley now. Some other, <clears throat> we'll hit this on the way out. There's our friend Eddie. How's it going? Welcome. Christmas edition Big Apple Comic Con. I'm not getting paid to do this. I'm on the Marvelous, half of the half of the podcast. Eddie Wilson and the other one's Peter Melnick. Have a great time. Happy holidays. Oh, and our very good friend, David Madison. How are you, sir? At a con, you fist bump. <laughs> oh, and thank you, sir. And Brian is here also, another friend of the shop. How are you guys doing with the uh, show today? How do you, what do you think of it? You want to take this? Uh, I think it's a great turnout uh, for a Carbo show, to be honest with you. A lot of people heavy into the books. Uh, not so much for the media guests, but heavy into getting their comics done, new artists, stuff like that. So uh, it's a good turnout, especially this close to Christmas. Uh, so tell us about that voice. Is that con flu? <laughs> no, 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 no. The, 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 the voice is, uh, is hoarse from just the end of the year. This literally is my last show of the year. I think I did about maybe 27 this year, 27 weekends. Uh, so this is just the end of it. Yeah, you stole my question. I was going to ask you how many cons you did. 27 cons. Is that a record? Is that, that is for, for me this year? Yeah. That's that's pretty grueling. That's like every other week. And it's not just cons. It's like store appearances, signings, things like that. So. Yeah, I saw. Were you, what is it? Tennessee? You were down in recently, or um, what was the that you were at that one big shop? Oh, yeah. uh, we were down in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. For uh, they have a great one called Tall Man Toys and Comics down in Knoxville, Tennessee. This guy has so many pops and so many toys. And the comic section is a good section, but the majority of it is like really great stuff. Especially if you're a Star Wars fan. I saw stuff there like, how is this not sold out? He goes, it's Knoxville. Yeah, that's incredible. I, I'd really love to talk to the owner of that shop and find out his business model because I saw it on, on your shorts and stuff. Uh, and your Instagram, incredible looking shop. I, I, I really want to talk to that guy. Um, Dave, tell us what you got coming up. Well, the next thing I have coming out is a werewolf film called Full Moon Fever. You'll be able to look for it in the first quarter of 2023. Awesome. And are you available for signings if any shop would like to reach out to you? And Sure, absolutely. Anybody who wants a schlep like me to come out, I'll be more than happy to show up. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of the con. Appreciate it. So I'm here. Can I get a, grab a card? Yes. Awesome. Hey, today, uh, do you have like my email or number? I can write that down. I also have a message portal on my site, so you can do that. Okay. Or now that we're following on uh, social media, that's what you can find as well. Well, all right. I'll probably contact you through Instagram. Sorry. All right, Tales from Flipside family. We got Ming Chen here at the Big Apple Comic Con. Uh, how did you do? Uh, it's so far so good. I mean, I, I'm here for fun. I'm here for fun. I, yeah, did I do all right? Yeah, you know, will I have a good Christmas? It's gonna be a it's a brighter Christmas now. It's nice, but you know, you know, I'm here. Uh, my, my friends are here. Brian O'Halloran is right next to me. Um, you know, if I could do every show where he's like to my left or right. Or in front or in back or whatever like that, you know. Well, I, I, Brian I was, and Dave are gems. Yeah, they really are. They but really so, am I? I understand. So, you, your shop, yes, Haven for Yours, is Brian O'Halloran's officially endorsed comic book shop. One hundred percent. That's amazing. Even if he says no. Okay. Well, he kind of t inferred that it was. So, which means now I got to go there. And one hundred percent, you are more than welcome. Actually, if you want to come do a signing sometime, dude, we're gonna do. All, we do them all the time. Uh, we go out to dinner afterwards. We uh, at, meet minimums. That awesome. sounds like my kind of my kind of fun, my friend. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, we'll food, 
food? comics. Yeah, maybe we'll throw some booze in there. Yeah, hey, Absolutely. you know, we, a, a we beer a, or two. We have a fantastic Fox and Hair uh, brewery right oh, down the man. street from yeah. us. Oh man, yeah. Fresh beer uh, and uh, good, pretty good food. Yeah. Amazing, yeah, yeah. amazing. That's awesome. And how long have you guys been open? We've been open eight years. Wow. Yeah. And um, what I was wondering was how many cons do you did you do this year? <laughs> I think I lost count, but I got to be getting close to 30, if not 30. And that's a lot that considering a 52-week season, 52-week yeah, uh, uh, year. Yeah. Well, you beat up Brian, though. He said he only did 27. I, it, it's not a competition. <laughs> not a competition. It's, uh, I mean, I would have loved to have been at some really of the same ones. It, right? I, I think if you if you don't enjoy it, you don't do 30 cons a year. And um, But, you know, this is where I'm coming from. You you remember, we're, we're old school guys. Yeah. And this is kind of an old school show. Like shows used to be like this, but even smaller. Yeah. Where there'd be like the kind of the four weird guys with the long boxes selling books, maybe a couple guys selling vintage toys, and that was pretty that much was it. it. And yeah. then maybe maybe you get a couple like independent artists or just people just hanging out there, and and we loved it because that's all we had. And you know, we the four guys, the four weirdos with the long boxes, how we got our back issues. That's 100%. how we filled holes in our collection. Then, you know, hit a time where they got bigger and bigger and, and now, now they're filling whole convention centers. They're like five day shows and uh, it's... And they have multiples and multiples of all the key issues. Yeah. And, and so my shop's a reader centric shop. Cool. I have $20,000 books. Yeah. Um, I have back bins that they, you know, they're $2 and up. So like we're really about the readers. Yeah. Um, I love that. But you know, we, we, you know, so coming from the small shop or the small shows to what they are now like we appreciate it you know we, we 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 knew you know we, we came from humble roots my friends so and uh you know these kids now god i'm sounding so old but kids now you know they waltz into a new york comic-con they're like it's all like this it's right it's all glitz can, and glamour yeah but these are the shows that i love yeah this these is, are the is, ones that i love yeah for yeah. sure uh, the Absolutely. baltimore's like this they got a show in new jersey in clifton new jersey yeah. which is even smaller than this yeah they have 50 cent bins yeah i love Crazy. that the one day like ballroom shows yeah. like they're you know they're great they're great it's it's not the size of the show sometimes it's the spirit and how they're run and, and the people that go there and that's that's why I love them. 100 100% like I love com I've loved comics since I was 7 years old. Yeah. That's why I own a comic shop. Yeah. I'm not going to be rich, I'm not making a million dollars. Your soul is rich. Yeah, that's, absolutely. And that's more important. Absolutely. Some people spend millions trying to make their soul rich and it doesn't happen. So we we figured it out, my friend. I, I enjoy we run we run student classes for kids yeah. uh, to learn how that's to draw. That's awesome, man. And uh, yeah, so we're awesome, really community-based. Grow, growing the audience, right? That's, Getting that's new fans, about. preaching the gospel. It's cool. So my show on YouTube is all about opening a comic store and oh, running man. a comic store. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. And I tell them, I, I'm honest with them, you're not going to be rich. Nope. But. You're going to work a lot. You're going to work a lot. And you're going to pull your hair out. You're and gonna you're going to deal it. with some, some, some particular customers. Yeah, it's funny. I, I get that question all the time. It's like, Ming, Ming. I've watched a show, I want to open a comic book shop. What advice can you give me? I'm like, all right, well, one, get your show featured on a major cable TV network. That, <laughs> and, you know, if you can have it air after The Walking Dead, the hottest TV show on the planet, that doesn't hurt either. <laughs> like, okay, I can't do that. What, what's your other advice? Like, well, maybe you, your shop can be owned by a major feature film director. <laughs> like, okay, I can't do that either. Do you have anything other advice for me? I'm like, yeah, don't. don't. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, so, don't. and I'm being facetious, but... I'm kind of telling the truth. It's a tough business, is, my it friends. Is, it, is a, it is a tough business. And, and I don't want to discourage you, but you know, make sure you've done all your homework, get kind of a bankroll, and then get you know, a really, get really, really cheap rent. This is why I tell them. Yeah, go to, go yeah, to, rent. Go yep. to some place that has not like Main Street is dead. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because you're gonna revitalize. Yep. Main yeah, yeah. It's gonna happen. They're gonna. It's gonna grow. You may. It may take a couple years. But people yeah. drive a long distance to go to yep. a really good comic shop. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't want to discourage anybody, but the, the other tough part is you, you're you a fan of comics, you grew up with them, you love comics. You're going to have to separate your fandom when you're, you know, because yeah, you buy too many to of one books. issue. If you're like, oh, I love that, I'm going to buy, you know, 100 copies, like, can you sell 100 copies? Yeah, or some, some indie that nobody else reads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or, you I know. 10 copies of that. Yeah, you know, you're going to have to figure out different strategies. Uh, I, at... The stash we have an indie comic section so it's like hey you're starting out you want to sell your comic great we'll take five copies we'll put them up on the shelf and uh, you know come back in a month or two we'll see how they did 
if we sell any, we'll give you all the money because we know you're struggling. Right. But you know, well, you know, but yeah, awesome we have idea. a yeah, we have an indie can I, section. Can I steal that? It's not stealing; it's yours, my friend. All right. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Well, Ming, thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, hopefully, we'll have you out for a sign. Yeah, soon. I would love to come for Fantastic. sure. Fantastic. Yeah. Take Haven, care, brother. Haven for heroes for life. Mark my words. Awesome. Best shop on the East Coast. Thank even, you, sir. Might be even better than ours. Woo! We'll see. You. So yeah. That's going to be my intro. Yeah, I think that's a great <laughs> intro. So. Thanks, man. Thank you, brother. Awesome. I appreciate it. I love the rig. The wireless mic, but you have the wireless hook to your hat. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I got two going. I love yeah, it. these guys are pros. I love it. And this is the table of the legendary Jim Starenko. An amazing artist, probably one of the top 12 of all time, in my books for sure, Hall of Fame. And also as we're going through, we have another, some stars in the lottery. Uh, we have Serena Vincent, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. And Bai Ling. Sorry. Oh, they put a sign up says the Big Apple Balcony. Where did that come from? That wasn't there earlier. It's right at eye level if you're three and a half inches tall. So we got to meet and befriend Brimstone right here. Me, you, sir. It's me. <laughs> I didn't realize. It is me. It is you. Oh, my God. It's been an honor and a privilege hanging out with you guys all day long. They have been so good to me because I came. I'm by myself. And they've been watching my table. You guys are so awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. And uh, we are serious about having you come out and do some signings. If when you're if you're up in the hinterlands of New York, we're not actually that far up. But <laughs> I'm always down for a good time. So We always have a good time. And I'm so sorry that I've been talking so much the whole day. I have no voice. I'm too, this is awful. And I'm usually booming. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to lose mine. Maybe on the way home. We'll see. <laughs> Probably after a few uh, Jamesons. Yeah. <laughs> they might bring my voice back, though. We'll see. It's a possibility. Yeah. So how many cons are you doing a year now? Um, first, for, before COVID. I was doing anywhere from, you know, 30 to 40, sometimes 50 and up. But it's not, I don't only do comic cons. I do a lot of foodie events. I'm in the foodie world. Um, I do a lot of um, comic cons. I do the paranormal cons. So I've been doing a little bit of everything. And uh, I got to tell you, it's a lot of work. But I love it because it's the best place to interact and engage with fans. People that you would never necessarily have the opportunity to meet. You get to meet great people like yourselves. Incredible contacts, lifelong friends that, listen, over you know, 20 years, matter of fact, Big Apple Con now, I've been doing cons. My first con was the Big Apple Comic Con about 20 years ago. So I've been doing conventions for 20 years. It's one of the best things I ever did. And tell us about, I heard that you had uh, some spices and sauces. Give yeah. us a shout out about that. So I, I did a show years ago called Food Hound Tidbits. And uh, I did three seasons, and it was a great show. Basically, while we were doing the cons and touring across the country, we would go from the uh, convention floor to the mom and pop hot dog shops, five star restaurants, and show people, you know, what was in each of the areas. So it picked up real well. And I always think, what's the next natural progression? So I was like, I always wanted to do my own sauces and seasonings. I'm a barbecue guy. So I said, I'm going to do it. So I worked with K. John's Fiery Foods originally, and I created my whole line of sauces and seasonings. They're all award winning. Now you can find them at Torchbearer Sauces, which is out of Pennsylvania, and they're absolutely incredible. So look them up at Torchbearer Torch Bearer Bearer Sauces. sauces. Yes. Uh, you can uh, find dot com, it. right? Yes. All right. You can actually find it if you go to therealbrimstone.com. 
you can actually go to um, the you know my store and it'll sh show you you know all the sauces and where you can get them. Fantastic. Well, it was a really pleasure meeting you, brother, uh, and we'll see you soon down at the shop. Honor and a privilege. Got to check these guys out. They're amazing. I love them. He's so handsome too. It's like he could be my he could be my, my brother or my father. I'm gonna father, I'm gonna maybe. I'm gonna say, we're good looking guys. He's a little bit better looking than me. His beard's better. <laughs> so those of you who want to open a comic shop, it's more than just opening the doors of a shop. Uh, if you need to make a little extra cash, move some books. You got to get out to the convention. You got to find the convention. You got to make friends. Uh, so you met some of our friends on the thing. They hook. They uh, always get us hooked up. It can be very expensive to run a show. You saw some of the guys downstairs. They paid a lot of money for their booths. You see us hidden up in the balcony. Everybody knows how cheap I am. We paid very little for our <laughs> our uh, table. Um, but this is also that we can actually make a little bit of profit. Make a lot again. Just like when you go to a convention or to a retailer conference, there's a lot of networking going on. You meet a lot of people. I, uh, I met some great people today. I met Brimstone. Brimstone's probably gonna come up and do a signing for us. We met uh, Travis. Uh, he voices uh, some of the Transformers. Probably gonna have him come up. You guys saw Ming, he's gonna come up and uh, sign for us. So. Even if we didn't make a ton of money today, we made a lot of great connections and some really good friends. Uh, we're really excited for the new year. This is the end of the year. And uh, get out there, read comics, and open a freaking comic shop. Cabanaro, something like this, sort of like the spaghetti, but not, it's not really spaghetti, right? It's like linguine with bacon and like a white sauce. But it's not. It's close to that, sort of. But yeah, I keep getting lost.